Mr. Chairman, just to pick up on that line of question, uh, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, is there any plan for uh, users of EVs to pay the increased cost that the additional weight and wear and tear on the highways uh, their vehicles cause, uh, you know, creates for the highway system? So we have not proposed any supplemental fee or cost at the federal level, but we recognize that different states are approaching this different ways, including sometimes a supplemental registration fee for an electric vehicle that won't be paying into the right, gas like tax. they've done in Utah. Okay, great. Mr. Secretary, when you travel around Europe, <clears throat> you have much more and better options, more freedom, I'd point out, than when you travel around the U.S. You can drive on highways that are generally very well maintained, no bridges collapsing. You can take high-speed rail at three times the speed. Or you can take airplanes, if you don't mind weather and maintenance delays, like the two and a half hours American Airlines kept me sitting at the gate in Boston on Monday after we boarded the plane before they fixed a problem. Two and a half hours would have gotten me more than halfway to Chicago on a high-speed train, and not to O'Hare, but downtown Chicago if we had world-class high-speed rail. In Spain, you get a full refund if the train is more than a few minutes late. Hard to imagine here in America. But Mr. Secretary, why has it taken almost three years into this administration to fund high-speed rail. Last year, you made a commitment to getting high-speed rail done in two to three geographies. I asked you about this at last year's congressional hearing, too. What's happened since then, and why is it moving so slowly? We spent our first year as an administration uh, fighting to get the bill passed with your help and make those fundings available in the first place. Uh, we spent much of our second year standing up the dozens of programs, many of them multi-billion dollar programs that were created by the IIJA which means now we're at the stage of making the first waves of project selections and getting those dollars out the door. Uh, now, Secretary, there were no projects to stand up for the administration because there are already high-speed rail projects ready to go just waiting on federal funding. So there are uh, a, a number, a small number, uh, but a very real uh, and compelling number of projects that are currently in process for competitive grants that will be announced soon. Um, I don't have news to make today on that, but what I can tell you is that high-speed rail projects are in the mix uh, for the non-NEC Fed State Partnership funds, uh, and I believe many of them have a compelling case to make. Okay, well, I'll just, look, seeing is believing. You often say that. We've got to get high-speed trains that people can actually see and ride like they have in the rest of the world, and this is an unbelievably slow-moving high-speed rail program, so I hope we can speed it up. Um, I was shocked to see Boston's South Station expansion listed as one of the priorities on the Northeast Corridor project inventory. It's a cost of $3.5 billion. Uh, it'll be obsolete in about 10 years. So why would you choose that over building the North-South Rail Link, finally collect, connecting the Northeast Corridor all the way from Virginia to Maine at a cost of just $6 billion? Well, it's not necessarily always an either or, as you know, they were in a bigger uh, uh, set of uh, projects that were contemplated for, uh, uh, for quarter ID. And actually, in this um, case, it is, because if you do the north-south rail link, you don't need to expand South Station. It solves the problem. But it solves the problem for 100 years, not for 10. I, I welcome a chance to get more details to you from uh, FRA on how they approach project selection there. Okay. Um, quick question on freight rail. Uh, a lot of talk about freight rail safety after some high-profile uh, derailments. Um, there's a bill floating around the House and the Senate that will uh, put more wayside detectors uh, along the routes um, at a significant cost, although, although not although that, that much. This is a 1960s technology. We have an opportunity, a transformative opportunity right now in America to jump, to leapfrog that and just have detectors on every single car. So, so an engineer would know instantaneously if there's any problem. I mean, this would be transformative for rail safety, ultimately saving the industry millions and millions of dollars, but they just have to get the instigation to actually put this widely available technology on their freight cars. So why are we doubling down, literally doubling down, that's what we're doing, we're adding more 1960s technology when we all have wearable devices that could be worn by freight cars and solve the problem much more effectively for the future. Well, the conditions for a wearable device are a little bit different than the conditions you experience on the underside of a freight car, but we certainly welcome the development of technologies that are newer, more effective, more comprehensive. And uh, I very much welcome the work that's going on on the Railway Safety Act. I'm actually amazed that you were the first member today to uh, give specific mention to any of its provisions because uh, we think it is wildly important, in addition to the work that we're doing with the authorities we have, uh, to get more backing uh, and more legislative authority to increase accountability and safety. Uh, so and don't- We have this technology on intercontinental ballistic missiles. I think if it can survive an intercontinental ballistic missile in space, it can handle the underside of a freight car. 
let, let's get it done and let's really move the industry forward and not just double down on the 1960s technology. It's a quick fix and won't really make any meaningful change. We're for any change that puts us better off than where we were, but agree that we should be shooting to, just skating to where the puck is going and try to make sure that we're not uh, just catching up to technologies that, uh, that uh, might soon become obsolete. Great, thank you. Thank you, Chairman.